Okay, in this video, we're going to talk about how to get experience without actually having a job. And this is a very common question for many beginners. It's a bit like a catch-22. If you want your first job, you need to show some experience. But how do you get experience if you've never had a job before? I believe the candidate with experience on their CV is in a much better position than the candidate without any experience. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to get experience, especially if you've never had a job before. But first, it's important to do some research and find out what sort of experience you need to get. And in order to do that, you should be looking at job descriptions. So I'd say at least 10 job descriptions that you want to apply for and make a note of the skills and tech that the companies are looking for. If you see a skill or a piece of tech that's mentioned more than five times in all the job descriptions, then you should focus on getting experience with that skill or piece of tech. Now, you may be thinking to yourself, why should I get experience in the first place? Let's talk a bit more about why I think you should get experience. Quick pause. This video is part of a course that I've put together to help you write the best software engineer resume or CV. It goes through how to put together the perfect layout for a CV, how to write bullet points in such a way that make you look amazing to future employers and a bunch of other things. To find out more, check out the description. Okay, let's get back to the video. So if you've graduated from college, university, or even a boot camp, you may be thinking, isn't this enough for me to get a job? And I'm sure there are companies out there who'd be willing to hire you with those credentials. But things have changed a lot in the last few years. And I'll talk a bit more about that throughout this course. But companies are looking for more than just a degree or a bootcamp certificate. They want to see that you have experience with the tech they're already using. I would say about four to five years ago, so around 2018, 2019, someone could graduate from a bootcamp with basic React knowledge, no experience, and they could land a job. Companies were hiring a lot back then and they were willing to train people up. Since then, however, the number of bootcamp graduates has massively increased and job vacancies have decreased. And when I say bootcamp graduates, I'm also referring to self-taught developers and college graduates as well. Also, there are plenty of devs who've been laid off from their current jobs and are looking for new jobs. In 2022 and 2023, for some reason, loads of employees from well-known tech companies were laid off. And according to layoffs.fyi, over 422,000 employees were laid off from more than 2,000 companies. You can see here that most of the layoffs were around January 2023. And these layoffs are from some well-known US companies like Amazon, Google, and Microsoft. So you can imagine there must be other smaller companies that have laid off their engineers that aren't on this list. To add to that, over 520,000 people graduated from boot camps in 2022 and 2023. So most of these jobs that these people would have applied for have already been taken up from all those people who are laid off. And so these people are struggling to find jobs. And if they don't find a job, then they'll be looking for jobs next year in 2024 and beyond. So you can imagine how much more competition there is to get jobs. Now, I can't predict the future and a bunch of these things might already change. In fact, people are hiring more at the end of 2023. And so this might continue going forward. But if you're a self-taught dev or someone who's gone through a boot camp, then that means you already have the basic software engineering skills, but it's not enough. Employers are looking for those that have beyond basic skills. So what sort of experience should you get? I know I've said this already, but I'm going to say it again to stress how important it is. Companies want a candidate who can get the job done well, and they want one who's working with the tech they're already using. So it may seem obvious, but you need to research the tech that companies are already using, make a list of the common ones, and get experience with those specific things. Also, if you are a new or entry-level developer, I would suggest looking for mid full-stack roles. And if you're a mid-level developer, I would suggest looking at senior. Aim higher. This is because if you aim high but apply for lower roles, it would put you in a much better position than someone who's been looking for roles with their current knowledge. 
you'll be exposed to more skills and more tools. Also, focus more on full stack roles. More companies are hiring for full stack knowledge than purely front end or back end, even if the role states a specific discipline. Start with one and then learn a bit about the other. So you can start off with front dev and then learn a bit of back end dev or start with back end and learn a bit of front end. Many senior front end devs that I know have some back end experience and senior back end devs have some front end experience. So it's good to get full stack experience. I've gone ahead, done some research and made a list of the tools that companies in the UK are expecting devs to have experience with. This is TypeScript and then React. After React, it's Vue, then Angular. Experience with relational databases like MySQL or Postgres. Experience with AWS or Azure, RESTful APIs, Node.js, Git and version control in general. If you go ahead and build a full stack application from scratch to deployment, then you're going to have experience with a lot of these things. Please note, employers may be looking for different skills based on the part of the world that you're in. So I know that around Greece or Italy, most companies favor Angular over React. So make sure that you do your research. Now, I'm sure this question is swirling around in your head. Isn't my portfolio from school or my boot camp good enough to get me a job? And I think the projects that you might work on from boot camps and online courses are not quite good enough to get you a job. Because these sorts of projects are good to teach you the basics and are good for learning. If you want to get a job purely from your portfolio, then this is possible, but it needs to be really good. And I would suggest you work on one, maybe even two big projects that are solving a real world problem. Build this project to a high standard. And this, in my opinion, has to be a full stack app. So one that has a front end, a back end, a database, and has been deployed. So people around the world can access it. And it needs to be designed well. It needs to look good. Ideally, one of these projects has potential to make some money. And it's something that people can sign up for and pay for. So a lot of research needs to go into this. And if you don't have the time, you could hire a designer or a content writer from Fiverr or Upwork to help you out. Let me give you a few ideas on what projects you can work on. The first one is an automatic crypto trading bot. Something where a user can log in, select the cryptocurrency they want to trade, set some parameters and the bot will trade for them. Next is a weight loss app. And this is where a user can log in put in their current weight and the weight they want to reach, the food they like to eat, and the app will suggest foods and recipes for them to reach their goal. The third is a Twitter Digest app where users again can log in, select a topic they want to follow, and the app will send them a daily short email that summarizes all the top tweets with that topic. Now, this kind of project for your portfolio should take, I'd say, at least three months, maybe less if you're working on it more, but around three months to build. And it should be in an industry that you have some knowledge or interest in. And if you do this, you can put this project in the experience section of your CV, not the project section. Kind of as if you've created your own startup and you're the founder. List the name of the product as the company, how long you've been working on it as the date and the tech that you've used. So as an example, If I worked on the Twitter Digest app, then I could put something like this on my CV. So I could put developer and founder of an app called Social Snap, which is that Twitter Digest app, the amount of time I've worked on it, so January 2021 to present, and give a bunch of information about the project. Again, I'm going to write it in the format, what I did, why I did it, and the outcome. Now, if you want a list of more projects like this, Then there's a PDF that comes with this course that will list out 10 real world projects that you can build or you can use as inspiration to come up with your own idea. This is one of the ways you can get experience without getting a job. And there are three other ways. We're going to go through all of them in this video. The next way to get experience without having a job is to do cheap or free work for business owners, friends or family. I'm sure there are some businesses in your area that either have a terrible online experience or don't have one at all. 
plumbers, electricians, bakers, solicitors, tutors, the list goes on. And if you're not sure, you could always do a Google search to find local businesses in your area and see if they have a website. Once you've found one, you can either give them a call or send them an email and you can say that you are starting a new web design business and you're offering your services for cheap or free to get some work on your portfolio. And there's no catch. If they're happy for you to work for them, then that's great. You have a client. But if you've tried multiple times and no one wants to work with you, then you could try approaching friends or family members instead. The idea here is that you want to work for a client who has specific needs and deadlines. You'll learn to try and understand what clients want and try to interpret it into something that will work for their users. This, in my opinion, counts as experience. And you can put this down in the experience part of your CV under freelancing or a name for your business. If you're watching this video while doing your bootcamp, then you can start this now. Imagine you're doing a six month bootcamp. If you start doing this, when you start your bootcamp and you continue doing it for another six months, that means you'll have one year's worth experience to add to your CV. To be honest, all the techniques I'm going to mention in this video can be done while you're learning. So you can learn and get experience at the same time. This is essentially what you'll be doing if you had a real job. You'll be learning and getting experience at the same time. So the third way that you can learn and get experience is through open source contributions. So alongside or instead of creating sites for other people, you could contribute to open source projects. Let's go through how you could start doing this on GitHub. Okay, so this is my GitHub dashboard. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to search. I'll type in topic with a colon and I'm going to search for good dash first dash issue and hit enter. So the good first issue tag is the tag that open source creators will leave for issues that are good for first timers to solve. So what we can do here is we can change the language to JavaScript because that's what I'm familiar with. And I'm going to click on the first repo. So here I'm going to go to issues. And I'm going to search for a good first issue. So I'm going to change the label here to good first issue. Okay. And there are a bunch of issues here. And if we look at the time that these were posted, this was a long time ago. Right now it's December and this was posted in July. Again, we can see there's a bunch of comments here. So I think these issues have already been solved. If I click on this one and scroll down, we can see in the comments that someone has found the problem and is working on it. So we can't do this. Someone's already taken it. So we can go back. And again, if you wanted to, we could find another repo to work on that has a good first issue. But I'm also good with TypeScript. So I'm going to go back here and change the code to TypeScript. Then I'm going to click on the first repo, go to issues, and again, change the label to good first issue. And we can see this one was posted 16 minutes ago and there are no comments. So no one's taken this. So if I click on this one and scroll down, you can see the author over here has put loads of info on what the issue is and their desired behavior. And if I scroll down, no one's taken this. So if I wanted to, I could put a comment here saying, I'm going to take it, clone the repo, start working on it. And this is one way you can contribute to an open source project. Another way is if you have some kind of relationship with the creator of the project, then that could be one way to go ahead and start helping. So for example, this project here, Stackwise, I've spoken to the creator of this project and they've told me that they're actively looking for people to work on it. So actively looking for contributors. And they've said that the contributor that contributes the most is going to be helped to find a job. So they're going to find the most active contributor a job. So if you want to, you can go ahead and work on this repo. But I suggest that you find a project that you have an interest in. And if possible, try to stick with one project. That way, you'll understand the code base better, the tech better, and the team better. And it would be much easier to add that as experience to your CV. Another way to get experience is through internships. So this is kind of a way to get experience by actually getting a job. Now, if you do go down this route of getting experience through an internship, then I'd suggest you keep them short. Companies can take advantage of interns and get them to do a lot of work for free. So I'd say 
do an internship for three to six months max. And even if it's paid, I would still say three to six months since you're not getting paid as much as if you were a full-time employee. Unless the company is really good and they're paying you really well. Now, through any of these methods, you're going to learn a lot and you're bound to forget some of the details or issues you've had to overcome. So I'd suggest making notes, starting a blog, making small videos, whatever you can do to document your journey. These are the kind of things that you're going to get asked in interviews, but also particularly, it's good to keep track of the metrics so that you can add them to your CV. If you want some inspiration, this is my blog on Medium, and this is a site with a bunch of notes that I've taken from all the tech I've used throughout my years of being a developer. Now, there's no need to pause and take a screenshot of this video to get the URL of my notes. I'm going to give you full access to this as well as 10 real world projects in this course.